Hi, thank you all very much for coming today. Uh, my name is Nathan Guerra, and as you all know, I work at Google. Uh, and this is, I guess, more than just a calling card. Uh, this is primarily, I think, what everybody thinks about when they think of Google. I mean, this is the probably the biggest interaction anyone has with the internet is, is this sort of search bar right here. And I guess while search is a hugely important part of our business and will continue to be so over time, I mean, in fact, we're continuing to evolve it and move it forward. Products like Google Now are taking search into sort of the next generation of what's possible and trying to anticipate people's needs. The reality is, is that while search is really, really important, it's not what I'm gonna to talk to you at all about today. Instead, I'm gonna spend my time talking about this right here. And it's not just a static black box. Uh, this is, of course, YouTube. YouTube is increasingly important to what we as a business are doing, but also it's important to what you guys out there are doing. The reality is I'm talking to you about, uh, about YouTube today because of this right here. Actually, rather, not because of this stuff right here. And not because of all these huge stats. Yes, it is a massively important part of the business. And yes, it generates a huge amount of views and amount of information. And the reality is, is I, I don't think that there's probably any place on the internet or on the world that has a bigger store of humanity than YouTube. There is so much information going up there every day, so many videos, so much content. But the truth is, is while all that's very important, I believe, and the reason I'm here talking to you today, is because YouTube is just a phenomenal platform for telling stories. In fact, I don't think there's any platform that's better for it. Um, since coming to this country 13 years ago, I have a huge place in my heart for things like Channel uh, Radio 4, uh, Radio is Important. I'm still an avid reader, but the truth is, is actually video can hit more human emotion than any other platform. And that's because of moving pictures. I mean, how many times have you stuck a video in a presentation because you wanted to make it more interesting for people? And in fact, I'm going to do a lot of that later myself, hopefully keep people awake. But not only video, but actually the human voice is very important to making people pay attention, to building that relationship with people, and actually the human face as well. All these things make video really, really impactful. And YouTube delivers against that. But in addition, it also has a level of interactivity that no other platform does. And that's why I think it makes it such a truly impactful place to have your content. Uh, the reason also I'm ta here talking about storytelling is because storytelling as a industry is what makes advertising great. Uh, anybody know what these sort of three campaigns have in common? These all won, let me give you a little hint. There you go. They all won awards this year at Cannes. They all tell stories in their own unique way. They all tell, you know, often the Oreo story was told through print and through digital. Uh, obviously, Dumb Ways to Die was primarily a video, but every story that wins at can, every ad that, campaign that wins at can, tells just a really interesting, unique story. And I think that is at the absolute heart of making great advertising. And that's why I'm talking to you today. But the challenge we have is actually more and more often what we're finding is the level of complexity of campaigns has just gone up a huge, significant notch. We're not talking about sort of, you know, simple three lines on a media plan anymore. Before I moved to uh, Google, this is kind of the last campaign I worked on. This was a campaign for a client that ran over sort of nine months, had multiple celebrities, had pretty much every social media channel imaginable feeding into it. And this is the kind of campaign which advertisers like to run, which consumers like to interact with, and which agencies like to create and be a part of. This is what gets people excited, this, this sort of incredible depth of campaign. And what's happening is more and more often people are coming to us and going, what role should YouTube play in a campaign like this? What role should YouTube play for my partner, for my site, for my brand? And we generally break that down into two different things. The first of all, we think everyone needs to have hero content. And hero content is probably what you're most familiar with as a brand and as an advertiser. Hero content is this big kind of tentpole moments. It's the things which get people excited. It's the traditional campaign work. And it often has you know, three or four kind of major campaigns in a year, and you might see that, and you might really, uh, consumers might you know, be exposed to these kind of big spikes of activity. And that's great, that's fine. Uh, but you need more than simply hero content. But let me talk a little bit about hero. What is, a hero. what is hero content? Well, hero content for someone like, say, Red Bull is Felix jumping out of the edge of space. It's a big, exciting stuff. In addition to hero, though, we need to have hygiene content. 
So hygiene content sits underneath Hero. It is kind of everything else. Hygiene content is stuff that a brand has a right to talk about. Where is your, what is the heart of your brand? What is the consumer going to expect from you? That's what hygiene content should be. Hygiene content should be stuff that can come out regularly, a week in and week out, repeatedly over time. It also needs to have uh, really, really coming from a place that the consumer wants and the brand sits together. And that's what's going to make interesting hygiene content. If, if Red Bull if hero content is Felix jumping out of the edge of space, hygiene content is guys in wingsuits jumping off mountains. It's extreme mountain biking. It's really, really cool stuff. In fact, often I think Red Bull's hygiene content would be other brands' hero content. But that's what people expect from Red Bull. That's what the expectation they've set is. They've built that up over a long period of time, and people understand that that is what they can do. Another great example of hygiene content, I think, is O2 Gurus. They do a great job of delivering exactly what consumers are going to expect from a brand. But what that means is that people can start to search for it. Hygiene content often fills that long tail. For someone like O2, you can imagine actually this is the stuff that people are going to search for on YouTube. This is the people that things are, are going to search for on Google. And O2 has a right to talk about that. They've got a right to fill that content. When you look for a review of the new Samsung phone or the new Apple iPhone, it's going to appear on O2 Gurus because they do all that content. They have an expectation for that content, and it gives them something to talk to people about all the time, again and again. So if we've got higher own hygiene, you need both of those things to deliver, I think, really, really great, successful YouTube experiences. We, over time, have begun to understand also some other things which play into making important content. And one of those things is actually a realization that consumers now more than ever are almost completely device agnostic. You know, consumers will pick up pretty much whatever is closest to them and use that as their medium for accessing content. We're now seeing in some markets up to sort of 25% of our views coming from screens of this size, you know, television screens and screens larger than sort of 22 inches. And the other side of the scale, we're seeing also 25% of our views coming from sort of mobile devices. So that means that from our perspective, you know, the, the browser, the, the, the traditional desktop computer and laptops are becoming ever decreasingly important. The reality is, is that means your content needs to be consumable on devices like televisions and playable on content screens like your mobile phone. The other thing which we began to realize as we started looking at our base is an understanding of subscribers. And this has become increasingly important to us. We've realized, actually looking at the stats, that subscribers watch videos for twice as long. They also watch four times as many videos. And so people used to come to us and say, well, I've got 17 subscribers, but I've got 100,000 channel you know, views. Is that a problem? Or I've got 100 million channel views, but I've only got 1,500 subscribers. Is that an issue? And traditionally, we said no. More and more, we've realized that subscribers do make a difference. And it is a really quick, easy way for consumer, for you as a brand, to continue to pull people back in and back in. And in fact, it makes such a difference that we've really begun to start to change our site. The other thing which I think is really important to recognize as you're building content is that YouTube is a slightly different place. It is a platform that is driven by its audience. Now, anyone know who this is? Anyone? I look at the women in the room. This is Tanya Burr. Go onto Google and you'll type in Tanya Burr and up on the sort of, you know, those cards on the left-hand side, up comes sort of a description of Tanya. She is described as a YouTube celebrity and makeup artist. And I think that's probably true. Uh, I still think we're trying to figure out what a YouTube celebrity is, but she probably qualifies. Tanya here is doing what's called a hauling video. Now, my wife says I have to spell out hauling because my American accent, H-A-U-L-I-N-G. Now, have you ever heard of hauling? Yeah, okay, I see a few hands, some, some of the women. Yeah, none of the men, no surprise. Let me explain what a hauling video is. Okay, so a hauling video is basically 99% of the time when a woman goes shopping and she comes back from shopping and she opens her laptop screen and she goes, hi everybody, guess what? I went shopping today and I got these black sparkly shoes. Oh my God, I love these. H&M, uh, 10 pounds, best deal ever. And I got this white top. I'm wearing this out for my date tonight with this necklace. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. Okay, it drives me crazy. Insane, I, absolutely insane. But the reality is, is these are becoming incredibly popular. There are more than 700,000 hauling videos on YouTube now. 700,000. And most of you didn't know what a hauling video was. Well, celebrities like Tanya Burr 
were getting asked by her fans, by her community, to do a hauling video. And so she started doing them. And she's getting, you know, six, 700,000 views when she does a hauling video. Now, <coughs> as a brand, there's an opportunity here. There's an opportunity for a brand to start thinking about what can I learn from this platform? And actually, how can I take advantage of some of these trends? If you were Debenhams or John Lewis, wouldn't you consider putting a hauling booth in your store? Wouldn't you have, rather have people going home and, you know, rather than going home and doing a hauling video, just doing it in your store? Or why couldn't you make it instead of hauling the things you've just bought? What about hauling the things you want? This could be your Christmas wish list. Go into the store, pick 10 items of clothing, go pick those items of clothing, and then bring them into a hauling booth, and then tell all your friends and your family what you want for Christmas. You can begin to get really in-depth understanding of audiences by paying attention to what's happening on YouTube. Things like Harlem Shake, even. I mean, you might not appreciate Harlem Shake anymore. Uh, you know, I think it's well past jumping the shark. But the reality is, is you cannot argue with 200 million video views in the first two weeks it was online. And what's interesting for me is it didn't come from one video. It came from thousands of videos. I mean, it was a perfect YouTube kind of thing, right? 30 seconds, a catchy track, and a repeatable, easily copyable kind of bit of content. It was almost de destined to go viral, that. Now, many brands jumped on the bandwagon. Many brands looked silly. But it's quite an interesting phenomenon to be aware of. The other thing I'm going to talk to you about is this last animal here. Historically speaking, cats and dogs have always been the most common searches on YouTube. They've been the number one and number two, and sometimes they fight. Sometimes maybe every now and then there's a horse video that pops up. But for a sustained period of time this year, we saw an animal eclipse them, and that is goats. Now, okay, some of you laugh, but the reality is, is goats videos have become incredibly popular. If you've not seen uh, the Taylor Swift goat video some people like, I'm a little bit older, I prefer the Bon Jovi goat video. Either way, go out and check it if you haven't seen them. But this is a phenomenon that people and some brands were able to take advantage of. And in fact, we saw a brand, Doritos, use a goat in one of their ads that ran for the Super Bowl. Absolutely ta ta um, tapping into the zeitgeist to create interesting content. And YouTube provides you an opportunity to understand what people are searching for and really begin to understand what trends are happening. So all this stuff together kind of had led us over time to really start to re-engineer this site. And probably at this point, most of you are familiar with the new one-channel design. It's a nice marketing term for redesigning our site. The one-channel design does highlight a couple of things. And I talked about subscribers being really important, so we've made that more relevant. It appears here all the time on this navigation bar on the right-hand, left-hand side. The other thing about it is we've made it really easy to subscribe and we've made it really easy to understand and find other channels, like oh, these over here. So you've got featured channels, you've got recommended channels as well, things like that that can appear. But you need to be start thinking about, as a brand, what channels would you recommend? For HSBC, do you start thinking about, actually, do I recommend the HSBC Germany site if I'm in the UK? Do I recommend the, the master brand site? Do I, how do I connect my other brands in my portfolio as recommended partners, potentially? The other thing which the one channel design really does is it makes it simple for you to have one channel that appears the same on mobile phones, on desktop computers, on big television screens. And all we do is we take the channel that you've got and shrink it and scale it down. And that's one of the many reasons we've moved away from, for example, using Flash and encouraging people to, instead of using Flash, start using things like HTML5 to create really interesting dynamic brand channels because those experiences can be almost exactly the same then on a mobile phone as on your desktop computer. Last couple slides before I start to get into the fun stuff, which is the videos. I think we have created not only a platform that is exciting, for, great for storytelling, but that actually now, even the advertising requires you to tell stories in slightly different ways. Now, most of you will know what a TrueView ad is, but it's that skippable ad that most people know, one, two, three, four, five, skip. Well, that requires people to start thinking really, really intelligently about the first five seconds of an ad in a way that's often very different than they would have historically thought about things. And I'm sick and tired of seeing some people running their TV ad that isn't optimized for the first five seconds on YouTube. You should be really considering the platform, really considering what the opportunity is, because that's where you can make a big impact for your clients and your brands. So the last really couple points are that we can deliver all this at scale as well. So there's a billion people now accessing YouTube every month globally. 
And that means that you know, there's also huge scale in the UK. Six million unique users every day on the YouTube homepage. 14 million unique users every month on mobile phones. We have an opportunity now to deliver stories at scale through this platform, and that should be exciting. And across almost every target audience can we do that, not just you know, 14 to 24 year olds. And then we also have a suite of platform tools which you should be aware of. So things like Google Analytics are really useful for understanding what's happening around the web with your videos and your content. But also we've got platform tools like Wildfire, which allow you to then begin to push this content out, distribute it to different channels around the web, whether that's Facebook, whether that's Twitter. And these platform tools can help you integrate all of your social communications in one place, which I think is really powerful. All right, right. So I've talked to you about the power of storytelling and the importance of it. What I want to do now is actually show you what some brands have been doing. And I've kind of broken this into, into about five or six different uh, categories. So I'm going to switch over to the laptop now and show you some videos. So uh, I'm going to show you some videos in this way. And many of you probably will have not seen YouTube TV before. This is YouTube TV. Uh, you can get to it by going to youtube.com slash TV, as I've done my browser here. And you can make it full screen. This is, I think, the experience people are going to see more and more when they look at YouTube in a large television environment. You might see something like this on your Xbox or your PlayStation or in embedded devices like your LG or Samsung TV. One of the great things about it is it's really easy to navigate. It's really quick and fabulous. You can walk around and move around very easily. But also, you can start to control it with things like your mobile phone. So for example, if I was going to play this video, I can do it right here on my phone. Um, one of the things we get asked often, and one of the very first questions I generally get is, what should I do with YouTube Partners? You talk about YouTube Partners. You tell me that they're a great opportunity and a great resource. How can I integrate and work with some of them? And I want to play you this video here. This is from uh, Tobuscus, I think his name is. And he's done an interesting sort of way. He's got an interesting way of creating and in integrating branded content. Tobuscus. No piano still in bed, hearing singing in his head. Look at the clock, he's late for a job. He'll lose soon at this rate. Turn on the sheet at the floor, start crawling. Look at the phone, your boss is calling. Who is that? Go to the kitchen, look for snacks in the cabinet. But there's just plates. That's where he keeps the plates, he knows that. Shut up! Open up the freezer to get some snackages. Who hot pocket sandwich packages? What is this, a hot pockets commercial? Why is the music so disproportionately epic? There's a force field on the freezer till he reads the label, then he can grab the box and go to the table. Dude, I gotta go to work now. It's always time for reading when it needs to eat. Okay, limited edition Cuban style and spicy beef nacho. Sing it! No! Sing! Limited edition Cuban style and spicy beef nacho. How'd you make me do that? Phone rings, your boss is calling, decline boss, and sing ingredients. Roasted pork, hickory ham. Mm. Okay, so Tabaskis does this sort of thing. He does this concept called trapped in a commercial and allows him to really quickly and easily integrate branded product. Now this is one of the primary ways that we're starting to see people work with partners, is actually go that, get them to create a bit of content in their style, in their channel. Now this video has been viewed, let's see, how many times has it been viewed? If we just tap it again, we get oh, three million. Three million views on that. That's pretty impressive. And the great thing about this is, is this isn't a traditional media buy. That will continue to live, and people will continue to expo become exposed to that as they join his channel as people like me tell this ad, to tell his story, more and more often, more and more people are going to see that particular ad for this brand. And that's a great opportunity. And we're seeing lots of different brands do that and lots of different partners do it. People like Michelle Fan have done it. But here's an interesting one. Watch this ad for Michelle Fan. We're going to show you how to go from okay. day to night. To look so this is like the traditional the thing that happens. In just 15 uh, minutes. Often but this is going to be thirsty work. Content, so we've called in YouTube, an expert mixologist to make the perfect drink for this evening. Now, for gorgeous that's girls. Okay. Fantastic cocktails. It's kind of worked. But the truth here is, is I've just seen an ad for Tia Maria. Before, I'm seeing a bit of branded content for Lancome. When I was in Paris, I fell now, in love with Now this is a really weird ad for me. This is a really weird bit of content. Look. 
Michelle this is a uh, YouTube you celebrity that. again. She's got about 4 no, million subscribers. And she is going to do this piece here, of content here with L'Oreal. Okay, she's done a deal with them. She does this kind of thing. Well, once a month, she does a piece of branded routine. content. If you don't them. cleanse your face properly, now the thing is, is before that, you saw an ad for Tia Maria. Sometimes when I play this, I've seen the an ad before, for Duff like or Lancome or uh, L'Oreal. Now, mask. I think These as a brand, when you're doing partnerships with partner, with doing partnerships with partners, so you need to make sure that you either get them to turn off the advertising for it, or you have to buy that spot yourself. Because the worst possible way is doing a bit of branded content and getting a competitor advertising in front of it. Now, not just that, but there's also some really interesting things you can do. So you can do simple things where you just ask them to put and demonstrate your product, like Michelle Fan and even Tabascus, or you can do much more in-depth kind of hey guys, really exciting so partnerships. So uh, this is Nikki. Nikki's another celebrity sort of makeup artist. So I love her. She does some like really great makeup and tutorial like tips. I've learned a lot about mascara stars. and things. She's going to show some people here how to... Um, uh, do some crazy eye stuff. Gonna I'm going to skip it because of time. You want to know how we're going to jump here. Skip on. Let's see. Okay. Jump there. Eyeshadow. And what you're going to do is apply this to your Yeah, we're going like to apply some makeup. And I'm going to take a really okay, here nice, we go. a light highlight. This is where it gets color, interesting. And you're going to highlight the lid with this. Apply this to your eyelids. Okay, now you're just going to take the glue, apply it to your eyes like that. This and you really take useful. your rhinestone. And you just <laughs> I look like this because I just watch, like watching people jump when they see it. But who is this? Who's this come by? This is probably uh, TFL or, you know, DVA. Nope. Oh, Volkswagen. Well, why is Volkswagen doing an ad with Nikki? I mean, that seems like a kind of an odd mix, and it seems like a strange message from Volkswagen. The reality is people like Volkswagen can tap into partners and get access to really specific niche audiences. So they obviously wanted to talk to young women, which is who Nikki applies to, who are, who are her primary audience. Now, they went crazy over this, partially because it doesn't advertise anything about VW in here. It doesn't even tell you that it's actually a piece of branded content. Their, partner, their, their people, her fans, were absolutely amazingly surprised and excited about the opportunity and what she did. <coughs> And other brands have done similar sort of things. Sony have done stuff where they've teamed up with people like Flo. So Pip here has a channel called Flo, and he does a lot of free running. Runs all over the stage, runs all over the environments. I mean, you know what free running is. Uh, and they did a partnership with him. They did basically a three-minute commercial featuring Sony products and Spider-Man tying their sort of whole thing together. And again, another interesting way for Sony to talk to a very specific niche audience of young men who are interested and free running. My favorite example of this is probably this right here. So this one is for Madison's. Anybody know what Madison's is? I guess it's best described as a meat-based product. It's, I think it's like turkey twizzler sort of thing. To infinity and beyond. Hello, and I'm ill. I'm just gonna throw that out okay. there straight away. So if I see so you I'm like- stop, I, I'll, I'll, I'll stop uh, talking over this guy right now because the reality is, is he gets incredibly annoying <laughs> for, my, like, for me. This is the, the individual got, got who's probably the most blue. influential um, gamer it's just like in the world. Like, you know, an amazing right now, amount of subscribers. Hardcore, His videos like, routinely so get millions places, of views. Like, he gets paid basically to play computer also, games. That's what he does for a living. Juice. And then talk about and it on YouTube. Now, Madison's wanted to target young like, boys and realized that TV was becoming that, increasingly so. inefficient That's for doing that. Still. And so what they did is they went to the source of the thing that they all do, which is play games. They went to him and said, let's do a partnership together. What we're going to do is we want to find some way of impacting at and getting and creating interesting content night. and talking to these nine guys. And so together they came up with this idea. The they sent this guy here a package. So I'm going to skip forward again. From London, let's see. Straight without if I get this right. So they sent this box to him. You can't even see. And inside okay. the box was... Is it a headset? A headset. Because there's different parts. No. Gamers to, to eat them. with their hands free oh, whilst giving. Hold on one second. Right, anyway, <laughs> dear syndicate, thank you for spe thank you for spelling syndicate, not pro syndicate. Every other person who messages me calls me pro syndicate because my Twitter. Wait until I get that Twitter name syndicate. Everyone call me syndicate. I was big fans of gaming and meat based snacks. Meat based snacks. Yeah. Meat based snacks. Odd, okay. but okay. Uh, we at Fridge Raiders. Oh shit! I know who this is. Fridge Raiders are taking on the challenge of snacking while you game. 
Okay. Challenge and snack building a game. device that will allow gamers to eat with their hands free. Wait, wait, did you hear that? giving full finger attention to any controller. Did you get that? We are calling... They want to solve the ultimate gaming problem. You've been playing for 14 hours. You're 12 years old, 14 years old. You've been playing games for 14 hours straight. You cannot leave because you don't want to let your team down. You don't want to get fragged. You're worried about dying on the field of battle. You have to pee. You probably peed in a jar already. That's done. But you're still getting hungry. What are you going to do? How are you going to feed yourself while you game? You cannot walk away. Madison's is going to make the ultimate gaming peripheral a headset that feeds you while you game. OK. It sounds totally ridiculous, and it is. But what it did is it allowed them to have a serious relationship and conversation over a long period of time with Syndicate and his fans. And that became all sorts of interesting content. These videos like this, this has nearly 900,000 views. On the whole, it's something like 30 million views throughout the campaign. And then what happened is not only did Syndicate start creating content and creating great work, but actually the brand started creating stuff as well. And these things worked in combination. So this is one of the prototypes uh -huh. the that they created. This is a robot arm mark too. It's a bit more powerful, a bit faster, and a clap activation. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> that's that's uh, not looking so good, that clap activation. <laughs> no. All right, so another example. But what's interesting is these two pieces of content had to work together. That was the content created by the brand and the content created by the partner. Now, the branded content in, in itself didn't get as many views, anywhere as near as many views, as the content from someone like Syndicate. But these two things worked together. They played off each other. This content also fed what the discussions were happening on places like Facebook, the conversation happening on Twitter. The stuff that was drawing those fans back in over time worked together, these two pieces. Now, there's lots of other examples of brands working with partners. Rexona have done it, and Lynx and Axe have done it. People like Jamie Oliver have done it. So Jamie's been sponsored, his channel's been sponsored by Ocado for the last few months. Now, I think there's missed opportunity here, because what happens is generally, before I play any piece of content, let's see if it happens this time. Here we go. I get this lovely ad from Ocado, just as an introduction to the channel. Simple, straightforward, and that's it. OK, but the problem for me is, like, there's no integration with any of the content that happens on Jamie's channel. Now, I'm not saying this is the right way of doing it, but you know, these are three girls here who are going to talk about paprika. Hi, sweet team. My, one of my favorite spices. Hungry. I love paprika. It's great. Paprika. They're going to talk about paprika. But isn't this an opportunity for them to take the paprika out of the Okada bag or the Okada man to appear at the door or some way of actually integrating the brand into the content? To me, that's a much more powerful message. And these two things have to work in common. Michelle Fan shouldn't have an ad for a competitor running in front of her content, and you as a brand should figure out a way of trying to integrate yourself into this experience as well. Um, let's see, let's move on to our next kind of topic here. And the next thing I want to talk about is real-time content. We're seeing more and more brands begin to create exciting real-time work. Now, I won't talk about Felix and jumping out of the edge of space, other than to say, you know, huge numbers and great opportunity. The brand did an incredible job. But there's lots of other brands doing similar things in a really different way. So, for example, you can do things with Google Plus Hangouts. And now, of course, any brand, anybody on YouTube with more than 100 subscribers can start doing their own live streamed content. You can do that as a single camera live stream, or you can do it as a Hangout. So, Clinique here had a really interesting idea. They've got a resource. They've got this woman here who is their skin care repair specialist. And what they did is they teamed her up with 10 bloggers, 10 bloggers who were interested and relevant to that audience they wanted to speak to. And they gave those 10 bloggers a chance for 45 minutes to come and talk to the skin care specialist, ask her any question that they wanted to, give her, uh, give, ask questions that their communities wanted to know, ask questions that they'd always been curious about, and get really interesting specific answers. Now, what that meant is, yes, they did a Hangout. That Hangout was then published and pushed to air. We call it a Hangout on air so that anybody can see it when it's live. But what also happened is that Hangout was then recorded. And those 10 bloggers were then able to put links on their blog, put links to the video on their blog, put and ask follow-up questions. And then they were also able to cut that down into a 60-second ad and run it as a TrueView ad and drive traffic to it that way. So they made a single experience that was actually incredibly easy and cheap to produce something that had many, many, many legs and many opportunities and ways into it. Other people like Topshop have done some great stuff, really revolutionizing the sort of um, experience that you get during Fashion Week. So 
traditional fashion runway show. Instead of that, let's have 10 perspectives on a show. Let's have somebody in the front of the house talking to strange men with long hair, and somebody in the back of the house you know, talking to some fashion people doing crazy stuff. You've got people at home asking questions, people in the audience watching people come up on stage, possibly even perspectives of models walking down the runway. 10 different perspectives on one event, and making that single event much more interesting and engaging for everyone. However, the thing about live events is, is you absolutely have to tell people it exists. A great example of this for me is this one here from L'Oreal. So this is L'Oreal Paris doing the world's first live hair coloring this event. This is it. Are you ready? I'm for ready. The application. I'm excited. I really desperately want to know how to color my hair. I'm excited, it's hugely important I'm to me, as you can see. Chris, I noticed they've got uh, wet hair. But what they they've done here is they've done a live event. Necessary. Now, did no, you catch the numbers? It's not great numbers. Hair. Let's see here. How many people? Uh, they've had 9,000 so views, almost 10,000 views. Now, the problem for me with this content is they didn't tell anybody it existed. They didn't let people know. Now, there's an opportunity in terms of a long tail. Yes, they did it live. And what they've done since then is cut it up and put it up on YouTube. <laughs> well, they haven't done a great job of driving awareness of it. The exact opposite is true for this piece of content here. Now, this is Samsung's launch of the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now, to me, this is not the most exciting piece of content. It's an hour-long demonstration of a product, probably more than I actually wanted to see. But we were able to drive 12 million views of it. 12 million people globally saw this piece of content and watched it for an average of six minutes because they were able to drive a lot of awareness of it through many, many, many different traffic driving opportunities. Now that's banners, that's things on YouTube, there was a masthead, almost every channel. Now Samsung's got a lot of money and they can afford to do this for this kind of stuff. But the point is, is just creating a live event isn't enough. You've got to tell people that it exists. You've got to tell people where to find it. My next set of examples of stories that people are telling, I think, are responsive stories. Now, everyone is familiar with Old Spice. Everyone has seen the kind of responsive nature of that kind of content. That's great. And I think that's what I would like to see more of, is people telling responsive stories. Well, another, another example for me is what's happened with body form. Now, everyone probably seen the body form video, so I won't show it. But the reality for me is, is this is a great example of people taking what's happening in other social media sites, in other sites around the web, and using YouTube as a platform for responding. So the story here is, of course, someone posted a comment on their Facebook channel. And instead of responding in Facebook, in the stream, where that comment might have been seen by, oh, let's say, 10, 20, maybe 100,000. Let's, let's go crazy. It's been seen by 100,000 people, that comment. But guess what? It's gone. The next day, it's disappeared. Once the stream pushes it through, that comment no longer really exists, unless you're going to throw massive advertising at it to drive traffic to it. However, by taking a, that comment out of context, responding to it via YouTube, via video, they were able to drive, I think now, something like 3 million views? 5 million views of a response Hello, to a Richard. particular, particular comment. Another example of a similar sort of thing is this one here. This is from Wheat Thins in the States. This was hilarious. Ah, I'm out of Wheat Thins. My life is officially over. Kind of dramatic. Tabitha. Yes. OK, do you recall tweeting, ah, I'm out of wheat thins. My life is officially over. Yeah. We got a hold of that. We just want you to be sure that you're aware that we have plenty of wheat thins. And that's for you. That's just a gift. That is a lot of wheat thins. Oh my gosh. Everybody in the van, let's go. In the truck. You take care, all right? Come on, boys. Who's next? All right, so to me, that's a great example of people taking what's happening in Twitter and being really responsive to it by the mechanism of video. And then, of course, what they did is they made that specifically 30 seconds so they could run it as an advertising on television as well. Here's another even stranger example. If you were brushing your teeth and your toothbrush turned into a hot dog, would you be like, OMG, or like, yummy, yummy? OK, it's pretty weird. But what they did is, for a day, they stuck a studio on the back of a Target store. Then every time they found a tweet that mentioned a product that was going to be in store, they ran through the store, grabbed it, shoved it in front of a model, and said, go. You've got 15 seconds to walk down the aisle and say this right here. Now, it meant that they actually created a significant volume of content. They had loads and loads and loads of tweets they did throughout the day. Lots of people were able to get their tweet created and spoken by a model. Now, that's an opportunity there in itself. What they've done is they've taken things out of context, responded via the mechanism of YouTube, but also given people something back, right? 
Now that person who uploaded that tweet has a piece of video content that's been created, a video piece of content that actually they didn't ever expect to get, but that has made them probably much more aware of the brand and much, much, much more likely to share the brand. For, in fact, there's another example of that, this one here. So um, Bespoke Offers was a campaign that uh, was run for Barclay Card. And what they did is they teamed up with four different groups of YouTube partners who create music, fun, interesting little comedy songs. And then what they asked them to do is read people's Twitter streams who, hashed, who, uh, who tweeted hashtag Bespoke Offers and then make bespoke content for them, highlighting the bespoke offers that Barclay Card gives them. So I sent a tweet in going, hey guys, I'm sure my tweets are much too boring, but the reality is I just think your campaign is great. And then they sent me this back. Here we go. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But you're wrong, your tweets sound too dull. The problem is we don't know which to choose. Because we love the one about the gray planning department. What were they planning? And why were they gray? I can't contain my excitement. You went to Dublin. And what did you tweet, Nathan? A picture of a pint of Guinness. Wow, I feel like I'm there. You went to a Dead Mouse concert and asked, will he be wearing the head? Yes, he always wears the head. That's literally the only thing you don't need to ask. Okay, me. I won't subject you to any more. The reality is, is, this is bespoke content for me. This was made for me. Now I am showing you, and I've told so many people about it. Now, most people aren't going to find this funny. Okay, kind of this audience might get the gray in the planning department kind of joke. And yes, I think everyone can have a laugh at my uh, tweet of a pint of Guinness in Dublin. But how much more likely am I to tell people about a campaign because I've been given a bespoke piece of unique content? And that was a response directly to me, something that I think video really excels at. The other way I think of being responsive is to actually pay attention to what's happening on YouTube. So this is one of my favorite YouTube videos. If you've not seen it, it's probably one of the worst uh, opportunity experiences of anyone driving I have ever seen. This is described as the world's worst parallel parking attempt, and it truly oh, is. Okay. This goes on for like that another 15 minutes, minutes of this poor woman <laughs> trying to park this car. It's horrible. Horrible. It's hilariously funny, but an absolutely horrible uh, vision of, of parking. So what happened was, is Kia said, well, we've got the perfect ad to run in front of that. Somebody was paying attention to this video. And that video had reached about a million views when they started to run this ad in Kia's new parallel park assist system is effortless and intuitive to use. It utilizes a total of 10 parking sensors to detect, recognize, and measure the length of a suitably sized car parking space. Okay. The so, driver I mean, like, simply needs... The truth is, it's not great content. It's not fabulous video, but it's incredibly well targeted. It delivers that message perfectly because it's specifically almost in response to a particular video. Now, every day we have an email that goes out. It's called the 4 a.m. newsletter. Guess what time it comes out? Anyone? That's right, 4 a.m. Although the reality is it comes out 4 a.m. New York time, which means it's absolutely perfect to arrive in our inbox at 9 a.m. Exactly. So here in the morning, every day when I get into the office, I have an email newsletter that says here are four videos at 4 a.m. which are trending right now globally. You should be aware of those videos. And then it breaks down the most watched and shared videos in the past day in whatever country I choose. So I choose to get the US version and the UK version. So I get a chance to see globally what videos are trending. Now, I picked up this video because it hit the 4 a.m. newsletter as a video that you should be aware of. Somebody at a media agency or a creative agency or even the client also picked up that video about the same time and decided to run that specific ad against that particular video. Now there's really opportunities, there's great opportunities to do this kind of similar sort of thing, being responsive to what's trending, what's happening on the platform. Uh, there's another, uh, the other thing I think is really interesting is interactive videos that you might see on YouTube. I'm gonna switch over to a different, slightly different playlist here because it's hard to show interactive videos. Um, oops, let's see here, that way. But what I can do is show them this way. So this is one from Juicy Couture. 
It's simply a video that allows you to click through and buy product as you're watching the video. So you like that, uh, let's see, what do I like? Uh, it's an interesting bikini, not really my style. I want, ooh, I like that purple dress. I can click and there I go, I'm gonna be right there, it's gonna be in my shopping basket, I can buy it for 69 quid, whatever it is. And I think that would look quite fetching on me. Great, I'm happy, I'm excited. We now have the opportunity to do interactive videos and taking your traditional brand video, which is pretty much what that is. They would have done a brand video like that showing off their fall collection anyway. But now that becomes a direct response mechanism as well. And that's a really interesting opportunity. How are you thinking about YouTube as a direct response medium? The other thing about interactive videos is you can start making really fun interactive content like this piece here. This is one of my favorites Thanks, from Grandma. Skittles. Psst, Tommy, smash me and I'll turn into Skittles. Skittles. Mmm. Why, Tommy? Why? Okay, so it's a traditional ad. Smash the rainbow! Taste the rainbow. Want more smashing? Go ahead, click one of these guys. Now it's interactive. What, what should we smash? Anybody? What do you want to smash? It's always the frog. Why is it? People don't like frogs? Is that what it is? Okay, well, let's smash the frog. So what happens? Boom. No, no, no! Uh, embarrassing. Okay, so using annotations, just like we had the last time for that branded piece of content, we can now create interactive videos. And you saw how that jumped to a slightly different point in the video? Immediately and very, very quickly, getting you to an opportunity to create some more interesting stuff. Now I'm gonna pause that one because I wanna show you a different video. I wanna show you this one here, which is, let's see, uh, one I think which is kind of a missed opportunity. This is a, I, I really like the video, I think it's really exciting. Uh, concept. I think it's a missed opportunity in many ways. So this is a, a taste opportunity. It's a chance for you to understand. Wine. He's going to help you know choose the like. perfect Just bottle of wine, wine for any opportunity for, that you're going to love. Our taste test will shed a bit of light on okay. things. The problem Three here for me is, is it takes about two minutes Marvelous. before he actually gets Jack, into anything. You know? He's still going. One, hot two, now we can get to the questions. Tea. I still can't actually choose Who anything. Does it for you? All right, wait a minute, here we go. There we are, we're about two minutes in, are we? Almost three minutes, two minutes in before I've actually had a ch chance to actually interact with the video. Now that's great, I think the concept is fabulous, but I think there's a missed opportunity here. For me, this is something that actually should become an interactive ad, it should play as an ad. And every day you can come in and choose what you're having for dinner tonight, and then click directly through, put that particular, you're having chicken, okay, here's a great wine on offer at Morrison's tonight in your shopping basket. You know, that can be run as an ad or it can be run as a piece of content, but now it becomes a piece of utility. When was the last time you had an ad that, like, you know, the Skittles one where you could play a game or you could play around with it? When was the last time you had an ad that was useful for your consumers? An actual ad that ran as an ad, not a piece of content that you had to drive traffic to, but an ad that ran as an ad that engaged people in that way? And I get the answer probably for most of you is never. Uh, let's see if there's anything else in here I wanna show you. No, I think we'll skip to a different playlist now. So if that's interactive, do, 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 do. Now I wanna also talk about episodic content as well. So episodic content for me is the kind of stuff that sits really, really well in that hygiene factor. The hygiene layer, it's the kind of content that brands can create short series. In fact, it's a very British way of producing television. Short series of content that drives awareness and interactivity. And it constantly continues to pull people back into your channel. Now, Oreos have done some really interesting stuff. The brand positioning right now for Oreos in the States is you either love the cookie or the cream. That's what they're talking about in all their ads. And so they contacted a bunch of scientists and said, make us machines. Show and demonstrate us how you as a scientist would deconstruct an Oreo, getting to the right bit of the, the bit that you like, whether that's the cookie or the cream. And so they've got these crazy machines that go through huge experiments to actually separate the two. They're quite fun and they all have about I don't know, half a million views. Now that kind of content would be very, very difficult to do in television. Hard to do in, t I mean, you could, you could buy, a, I guess, a three minute ad spot if you wanted to, but I'm not sure that it would be the right place for it. 
Another great example of episodic content, and I think people have done it really, really well, are Fosters. They really have become synonymous, I think, with comedy in a way that no other beer brand has. And that's because they've done great deals with Alan Partridge. They've done some interesting work with Vic and Bob. And what they've done is they've done short series of content that can run for a period of time and live on their YouTube channel. Great example of that for me is Jameson's Whiskey. Jameson's have teamed up with Kevin Spacey. And what they've done is slightly different. They've actually created a competition. The competition here is send us a script. We're going to take 10 scripts, short films, and we're going to get Kevin Spacey to produce them. He's going to star in them act in them, and make them, and direct them. And they're fun. They're really engaging 10-minute videos. And there's a really strange one about a pirate dentist thing. Trust me, it's fabulous. Go watch it. But they're not the only brand doing this kind of stuff. Philips have done it. Land Rover have done it. Land Rover is interesting, because what they did is they did 25 short pieces of content with a YouTube star in the States named Peter Bragel. And what they did is they got him driving across the country for 25 days in a Land Rover. Every day, he did something interesting in the car, whether that was going through a Land Rover experience, taking it down and over crazy terrain, or whether it was just driving around the countryside. But every day, at the end of the day, he took that content that he created, that he'd filmed, and then edited that down into a video, uploaded it to YouTube. What's also very interesting for me, though, is that content was then picked up by the Discovery Channel, and next year they're going to do it, instead of a YouTube thing, they're going to do it on television as well. So sometimes YouTube can be used as a proving ground for TV. Sometimes it can be the destination for the content as well. Another good example is Domino's. They've done some really exciting, interesting stuff in the similar vein. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about really is stories which embrace the platform. And I think there are opportunities that for you to do interesting things within the platform itself. So realistically, I want to talk about, I guess, some of the interesting examples of true videos. So these right guys now here. with Superdrug, there's better than half price Nivea and Soli Suncare. That's it. You can watch a Dancing Cats video now. Go on, I told you about the great offers on sun cream at Superdrugs. So you can press skip. Skip off, or whatever it's called. Oh, no, wait, there's also great prices so on the beat wax fridge. Brilliant. Right, you definitely can and skip off now. And that little now. skip video right there. What are you waiting for? Skip button, that's Another what's come offer. up. Okay, let's now, see. this is there's, really um, beginning to three play with the format. Play with the acknowledgement that actually if you there's want an ad running to right there. Enjoy your Dancing Cats video. So she's done a couple of interesting things. She's talked about dogs and cat videos. She's talked about uh, the skip button. She's made reference to things that are unique to the platform. And by making reference and doing unique, interesting things on the platform, I think you can create content which goes above and beyond and is much more effective than traditionally things that were. Now, this was also very cheaply done, right? This is a single camera shot using the same actress which appeared in the TV ads. This was shot probably, at, I don't know, what did it take, an hour? Let's say, let's say it took two hours to shoot that on the back of another shoot, which is already happening. Cheap, easy content, very easy to produce, and much more effective. So next time you've got and you see, as a creative agency or as a brand, YouTube on your media plan, think about how can I make my work work harder? How can I make my ads more effective? And the answer is by doing some small, simple things making reference to the platform, and making use of some of the features which are unique to the platform. One of my favorite features is the annotation feature, and I've shown you a little bit about it. Let's skip the ad. Priest. Unlike some churches where you can just fill out a form online and poof, ordained, the Catholic Church so is becoming become a, priest. a priest as a real, you need training profession. So you're going and to require a And what's going to happen here is this thing's going to come up right there on the bottom. A Do you see that? What they've done is they've, do, they've done a video, and then they've stuck an annotation. And at the beginning of the video, what I skipped is an explanation that if you want any more information about what's happening in this video, click this thing here. Now when I click that, what it's going to do is it's going to take me to another video for more information. And you can see here it's in a playlist. So now what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a footnote about that particular video. That footnote's going to play. At the end of it, because it's in a playlist, it jumps right back to the video that I was watching previously, exactly leaving off from where I was. Now, why couldn't a car brand do that? Why can't a car brand use that feature and function in an ad to go, actually, which bit of the car would you like to explore? You want to look at the wheels? You want to look at the interior? You want to look at the sunroof? Click on whatever's interesting to you, and then you can watch that experience, get an experience of the car. Come back to the car at the end of that and see something else, explore something else. Whether that's a car brand or any sort of anything that might have a level of interest that you can go in a depth that you don't want to get to in a 30 second ad, you can deliver through things like annotations. Now, in addition to annotations, there's lots of other features and functions that people are using. One of my favorites here is this example. Oops, we're going to 
to skip that. We're going to go to this one here. Now, creatively, it's not the best use of YouTube, but I think the concept is fabulous. OK, so has anybody caught what's happening right here? This is an ad. It ran as a TrueView ad. It's kind of different for me. Guess the destination at the end of the video and win a 30 pound or 30 euro voucher code today. All right, that's, that's different. I, I'm, I've not seen many ads that actually gave me an opportunity to get something back. Now, content-wise, it's pretty cheap. It's pretty uh, fast. It's not great looking. Um, but, you know, they're interesting things. They're asking questions at the top. Any idea? Oh, keep watching. Reminding me why I should be watching it. Here we go. Where is this place? What could it be? Anybody have any guesses? Where, where was that? Well, if you guessed Mallorca and you click fast enough, which I didn't do, it would take you through to uh, Hi, an ad don't for me. Oh, Wait, this is good. You see that you've actually won a 30, 30 year of voucher. Now, again, when was the last time you did that in an ad? When was the last time someone played a game or actually engaged in an ad that way? And I'm almost willing to bet, like I said before, that you've never done something like that. Now, again, it doesn't look great, but I think as an example of how you can play with the platform and do some really interesting things, there's probably not many better ones. I'm going to show one more video just because I think it's another really good example of what is possible with our platform. And that is, let's see, where is it? Uh, I can't see here. All right, so this is one of my favorite videos. This is for uh, Eagle Brand Caramel Sauce. And uh, oops, let's, let's skip a little bit into it. Let's see if we can get back to the beginning. Here we go, all right. Caramel is a fun, tasty way to turn your ordinary baking treats into something extraordinary. But to have your desserts be their best, you need a perfect caramel sauce. How do you get one? You could use Eagle Brand's new Dulce de Leche caramel flavored sauce that's always ready and always delicious, or we could make it the traditional way. We've already got our sweetened condensed milk in the pot, so with a little heat, we can start stirring. Okay, so, um, anybody catch how long this video was? Anybody see? Yeah, exactly. Let me show you. Look, see now? This is a three hour, 10 minute video that ran as a TrueView ad. One of the things which I think is really important to remember is the platform is almost infinitely flexible in terms of time. You can want to run a 10 second ad, fine. You want to run a five second ad, okay, not a problem. You want to run a 10 hour ad, you can do that. Now, whatever length your story needs, this platform allows. This story in particular, because it brings to life the product benefit in a way that almost nothing else does, needed three hours to do it. I needed a three hour story to show you what happens. Now, okay, if I skip ahead, you, what you'll see is the guy is actually still really still stirring the pot. He, occasionally the shot changes. There you go, he's a different arm now. And we'll go ahead, at three hours in, it comes to the end and it says, great. Now we're almost done. We've stirred it for three hours, and in another two hours it'll be cool and we can use it. Or you can, of course, use our product. It demonstrates the benefit of the product perfectly, amazingly. And that is what this platform does. I hope that you've learned some stuff today. I hope you've had a really interesting time. I'll leave this playing, I think partially because it often mesmerizes people into submission. But if any, anybody's got any questions, I'll be happy to take them afterwards. I think you've learned some interesting things. This platform gives you great flexibility. It's a phenomenal place to learn and tell stories. And there's some really interesting things that can be done in an interactive way on it. If you've got any questions, come see me afterwards, or you can always reach me here at Google. Thank you guys. Oh, look at the time. Just one more hour to go. Oh, there we go. Thank you guys very much.